Coming of age in show business can be a traumatic experience. It's a painful way to grow up in many ways. TCM host Robert Osborne welcomes four of Hollywood's most talented and enduring child actors for a compelling look at growing up in the spotlight. I think there's much more rejection and I think it is hard. I think it's important for children to be able to feel like they can be someone other than themselves. Daryl Hickman, Margaret O'Brien, Dick Moore, and Jane Withers share their stories on private screenings, child stars. Now, I've had 12 psychiatrists and it's cost me $85,000 to be able to sit here with some degree of sanity. Coming up next. It was Daryl Hickman's tap dancing skills at the age of eight, which caught the attention of Bing Crosby, who helped open Hollywood's doors to Daryl, leading to his having some great moments on screen in films like The Grapes of Wrath, Men of Boys Town, Leave Her to Heaven, and Any Number Can Play. Along the way, Daryl dated Elizabeth Taylor, became pals with Wallace Beery, and became a Broadway star, a television executive, and a much respected acting coach. I'm going to start this <laughs> round table late. discussion that we're going to have with asking you all, what is your first memory of being on a film set? Let's start with you, oh. Daryl. I was on the set of a film called If I Were King. Uh, I was an extra, I think, but they gave me a line. Uh, I held out my hands. I was all dressed like a ragamuffin. And I held out my hands and said to Ronald Coleman, alms for the poor. And did you get paid extra for that? No, I did not. And how old were you? Three and a half. Three and a half. Let's talk about second careers. Let's talk, talk about after you stopped acting. I mean, after, after your film career, you went to Broadway. You did have well, a succeeding business. I went business into television, really and I, uh, but I was running out of gas as an actor. I, I, I'd done 100 films. I did almost every major television show. And I could feel, I could feel the lack of, of enthusiasm in a way I never did when I was younger. And now I'd started as a singer, a tap dancer and a singer with Bing Crosby and the Star Maker. And I had, I, I was a very good tap dancer. And I, if, if I work at it, I can sing. So I started to think about where could I go next that would be good for me. And I started to work on my singing and I, my dancing. I went out and I did some stock in the musical theater. And I ended up replacing Robert Morris in How to Succeed in Business Without Really Trying. And I, that on Broadway. Moved, on Broadway. And I spent 14 years in New York. It was a great period of my life. And you became an executive at CBS? And then I got a job as an associate producer on a show called Love of Life, oh the, the second longest running yes, soap, soap opera, opera in the history of television. I went in, I became a, a, an associate producer because of my writing background. I had been writing television when I was in California. And they asked me to come over and, and, and supervise the soap operas in the, in the program department. So I became a program executive for five years. Did you like that? I had a ball. It was like playing another role. I wore a necktie and a suit. I had Mr. Paley's card in my pocket. I would take people to lunch. I would spend hundreds of thousands of dollars like I knew what I was doing. It was wonderful. Oh. And that brings us up to date. I started teaching while I was at CBS. I started teaching uh, a, work, a workshop and then... I taught all the while I was at CBS. Then when I came back to, to L.A., I, I came back to produce a sitcom pilot for Norman Lear. I stayed in California, and I've been teaching in California at the Debbie Reynolds studio in North Hollywood. And what I have done, and I'm just about to publish it, you're holding it in the your hand. The Unconscious Actor? The Unconscious oh. Actor, Out of Control, in Full Command. And the line down there at the bottom, just above my name, is very important to me. The art of performance in acting and, and in life. life. And oh. I've discovered in my teaching over the past, uh, you know, almost three decades, that the performance that we all, we're all performers in one way or another. And the rules perf for performance excellence are the same no matter whether we're actors or singers or dancers or, yes. or tailors or, you know, whatever. Oh, yes. And uh, that's, I want to get the message out, mm. not just for actors, but for as many people as I can that's to help them with their creativity. 